I know a lot of Tesla fans are worried about third-party EVs that are probably slower charging, clogging up the supercharging network and making it harder for them to charge, but I do think if we're thinking long, long term, if we're thinking way into the future, it eventually makes sense that all charging networks should at least be somewhat open so that in the future we don't run into the situation where your car is low on range and low on battery and you're right next door to an electric vehicle charging station, but simply because that charging station was built for another brand another vehicle that means essentially it cannot charge your vehicle because it has a different port it has a different connector that's definitely not how it works with gas vehicles in gas stations you don't have to go to the Ford official gas pump to pump up your f-150 no you just go to any local gas station and I do think the idea of just being able to charge your EV at any charge station makes sense it's just important to acknowledge that charging is not exactly the same thing because a lot of EVs out there do not support the higher charge rates so if someone had to park themselves at a Tesla supercharger but they couldn't charge very fast they could be there hogging up the charge station preventing other people from charging for a long long time so it's because of those fundamental differences that EV charging is not going to be exactly the same as filling up your car at a gas station but I do think this problem can be resolved slowly over time and Tesla is interested in opening up the supercharger network although we haven't really seen them do it yet now thankfully we've actually heard confirmation from Vestland County way over in Norway because that county requires any charge station that gets put in to support all EV brands. Essentially Tesla wants to expand their supercharger network in Norway but this county is saying the only way you can put a charger here is if you open it up to other people and through this documentation and through a statement from the Vestland County officials they are now saying that Tesla plans on opening up the supercharging network so that they can actually bring their chargers there by quarter three of next year so we still got a little over a year to go before that happens but I just wanted to mention it makes perfect sense for Tesla to open up the supercharger network in Europe first because unlike America Europe actually thought through the EV charger rollout and agreed on an open standard the CCS connector is on all Tesla superchargers there and that's what the Tesla's in Europe charge off of and that's what pretty much all other EVs in that continent charge off of as well so right now yes you could technically pull in your third-party EV to a Tesla supercharger and plug it in, but simply because it's not a Tesla, it would not charge. One of the very convenient and nice things about the Tesla supercharger network that Tesla fans love so much about it is how simple it is to charge your vehicle there. There's no screens, there's no card swiper to interact with, you just back in your car and plug in, and as you're plugging in, the supercharger network communicates with the battery, it communicates with the software in the vehicle, and of course communicates with Tesla servers of who exactly to bill. Your credit card information is stored in that vehicle, so that simply means you take the connector, you plug it in, and you don't have to do anything else. Now, of course, if you wanted to charge other EV brands at the supercharger network, those other EVs are not going to have the software ready to charge, and they're not going to have registration and credit card info baked into the car like Teslas do, which is why, as we've talked about in the past, if they did open up the supercharger network, you would still probably have to download a Tesla app, to genuinely get it to work. So this would mean even if you were driving a VW ID3 and you stumbled upon a supercharger and that's where you wanted to charge from, you would need to make sure you have the Tesla app downloaded, which makes sense because if you're going to non-superchargers, you pretty much always have to have an app downloaded for those things as well. And you would have to plug in your location, make sure you're at the right supercharger and check the charger stall, whether it's 2B or 3A or something like that and say, okay, I'm plugged in, I'm at this location and that app would probably even require you to put in the specs of your car so that the supercharger would know exactly okay how much energy do I give this vehicle how many amps can I output at once and how slow do I charge to preserve the battery health and there'd likely be a lot of collaboration that has to go on between the car makers that are not Tesla and the supercharging servers that communicate with the vehicle they plug into so it would definitely be a bit more complicated but the idea is it would be possible so it makes sense also to start rolling out the supercharger charger network to other brands in Norway because that is statistically a fairly low populated area so there might not be gigantic lines of cars behind superchargers like there are in California and the other advantage Tesla may have in this situation for those wondering why would Tesla want to support other EV brands would they only want to charge their own vehicles it's partly because Tesla could still dictate the rates of that supercharger there's nothing in the law currently that prevents them from charging non-Teslas twice the price for electricity than if 
you buy a Tesla, so they might still be able to advertise the supercharger network, provides you the best rates on the largest charger network in the world. And yeah, they could still get by government approval by saying, yeah, okay, even if you're not in a Tesla, you can still charge here. You're just gonna end up paying a little bit more or maybe a lot more depending on how they wanna do it. And I do agree that this could very quickly become hairy if other EV brands decide, well, we don't have to try very hard to support new charger networks because our car can technically now work with Tesla superchargers. So other EV brands will just start advertising that, yeah, this works with Tesla superchargers. You're good. You don't even have to worry about it. And that's why I think the rollout of superchargers to third parties would be probably very different in the United States, partly because Tesla has a different connector from most other EV brands, whether it's Ford or VW or even Rivian. They're all using the CCS connector, but Tesla has their own proprietary connector. And it's totally possible in the future, if they want to go through the in-app route of letting other brands charge from superchargers, Tesla would be able to sell their own adapter. And because that connector is somewhat proprietary, Tesla could charge whatever they want for that adapter. So they may be able to get a government approval that says, okay, yeah, superchargers are now charging other EVs, but you have to buy our $500 or $1,000 adapter. So it wouldn't be just a software update that results in all these Chevy bolts driving to the nearest supercharger like, woohoo, we can charge for free now. Because if they don't have the adapter, obviously they won't be able to plug in. And the other idea that we've bumped around on the Talos of EV podcast is that Tesla could partner with individual brands on who is allowed to use the supercharging network and who isn't. And one really, really smart and really wise incentive that I think Tesla should do, or maybe even governments could allow for, is the only other third-party brands that can utilize the Tesla supercharger network are auto brands that no longer sell any vehicle with the internal combustion engine. That's how you could prevent a huge influx of too many EVs crowding superchargers all at once because there's not that many brands out there that are exclusively doing EVs. That means your Lucid Airs could charge at superchargers because there's not going to be that many Lucids or your Rivians because they only sell electric vehicles or your Apteras. Low volume startup electric companies would be able to have a great incentive for people to buy them because now you could know, hey, I could charge my Aptera or I could charge my Rivian at the supercharger network as long as you buy that adapter and have the Tesla app all set up. And companies that have tons of EVs on the road, whether it be Ford with the Mach-E or VW with the ID4, they're still selling combustion engine vehicles in different parts of the globe, including America. And because of that, they wouldn't be qualified to use the supercharger network. So there wouldn't be a ton of legacy brands clogging up the network. It would just be a good incentive for legacy brands to get rid of all of their internal combustion engine options. And it would be a great advantage to the up and comers who need all the help they can get because they're still in the revenue loss segment and they're not profitable yet, whether you're Lucid, Rivian, or Aptera. You're just kind of burning through cash. So you need as many advantages as possible. So in my opinion, that would be a great way for Tesla to encourage the rest of the industry to switch entirely to electric. Hey, if you're still using the combustion engine, you can't use our network. But if you're a brand or a startup company that is completely electric, or if one day GM is able to kill off all of their combustion engines, then we'll talk about adding you to the supercharger network. That supports Tesla's fundamental mission, which is not to become the only car company in the world. It's ultimately to accelerate our transition to sustainable energy. So if Tesla is able to get the rest of the automotive market over to electric vehicles, that's ultimately helping Tesla reach their mission. And finding out Tesla actually confirming that yes, by quarter three, at least in Norway, they want to open up the supercharger network. That's the first step of a very long process of Tesla working with other brands on charging. And I don't think that they're going to open it up in the United States anytime quite soon unless they do something like only allowing it for all electric brands, which I think would be a great idea. But I'm also, of course, very curious to hear how you guys think of Tesla with the supercharger network. Do you think it should always be exclusive to Teslas? And even in the year 2050, 2070, superchargers can only charge Teslas and nothing else can go there. Either way, I think it's safe to say Tesla is going to need to rapidly expand and alter the supercharger network, especially because after the past couple I visited, I have no clue how a vehicle the size of the Cybertruck is going to fit in those typical supercharging stalls. And there's only two or three superchargers that have gone in since the Cybertruck announced that have wide enough stalls for them to charge with, not to mention the mega charger network for the Tesla semis. There's a lot of work to be done, and I'm glad Tesla is using prefabricated superchargers to expand the rollout of the network. Feel free to let me know how you guys feel on the subject. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.